Hello there. In the past, I feel like I've been too harsh on modern animated series, as there are a bevy of great ones out there, and I personally think the best animated series on the air right now is the wonderfully funny and very delightful Phineas and Ferb. Since airing on the Disney Channel in early 2008, it has become one of the network's biggest hit, to the point I'm surprised they don't produce more animated series at the moment. The show was created by Dan Povenmire and Jeff Marsh in the early 90s when they were both working together on The Simpsons and Rocco's Modern Life. Inspired by Povenmire's childhood when his mother told him to make the most of the summer, they pitched it around to different television producers who rejected it. Even after Povenmire went to work on Family Guy and SpongeBob SquarePants while Marsh moved to England to work on Postman Pat, the show concept kept getting pitched. Finally, Disney decided to pick up Phineas and Ferb, and the show began production. Phineas and Ferb are two stepbrothers who decide to do something extraordinary and special every day of the summer. Throughout the course of the series, they have built giant robot dogs, zapped themselves into a video game, written a one-hit wonder, and opened a Lemonade Stand franchise, among other incredible things. In a way, this works in displaying the importance of imagination and the ability to think up anything if possible. As such, Phineas and Ferb are not simply excellent role models for children, but people of all ages. Meanwhile, the sister Candace will constantly try and bust her brothers by revealing Phineas and Ferb's creations to their mother, only to have them disappear before she can see them. Candace, hilariously voiced by Ashley Tisdale, doesn't do this because of any sort of malice towards her brothers, but rather because she cares about them and doesn't want to see them both hurt. However, this also drives her overboard and gets in the way of more important things, like her friendship with best friend Stacy and her relationship with Jeremy. A subplot in just about every episode involves their pet platypus Perry's secret life as an agent, who goes off every day to stop the evil Dr. Doofenshmirtz from taking over the tri-state area. These usually feature the funniest moments in the show, as the relationship between Perry and Doofenshmirtz is quite a multi-layered one. Even though they are sworn enemies, there is actually a bit of a mutual respect for each other that is actually quite touching at times. I also really like how this seemingly unrelated subplot ultimately connects to Phineas and Ferb's adventures, as Perry's mission actually causes their inventions to disappear most of the time, much to Candace's gaping shock. Due to Phineas and Ferb following a specific formula in its scripts, it easily could have gone tired after a couple of episodes. However, the writers managed to keep the episodes fresh. A large part of this is because of how self-aware the characters are. They know all the cliches of their daily lives. They are aware of their various catchphrases. That adds another layer of fun to the proceedings, as they are always twisting these things around. There are episodes which completely play with the formula, like one of my personal favorites, where Phineas acts like Doofenshmirtz and vice versa. There's also the Christmas episode in which they take their summertime adventures and transplant them into wintertime, and they even do the pilot again, but as a musical. It's very impressive how the writer is able to reinvent themselves and think of new ways for Phineas and Ferb's inventions to disappear, or for Doofenshmirtz's plans to get foiled. Another key element to the success of the series is the songs. Pope and Mayan Mars did not intend for every episode to have a song, but the first musical number so impressed the Disney executives that it became a major part of the series. Sometimes there will be musical numbers and some will just be montage background songs. Each song is catchy and fun with a memorable beat and help drive the characters and the story along, along with being very funny. If I were to pick a favorite song in the series, it would probably be Summer Belongs to You, which caps off one of the extended episodes and represents the theme of the whole series. I would even go so far as to say these are probably some of the best songs from an animated series since Animaniacs. The show also takes complete advantage of the fact that it's an animated show, and even when the story goes in off-kilter direction, it makes sense in the context of the series. The writers make Phineas and Ferb's ability of building elaborate inventions in a single day incredibly believable, and shows their willingness to make the most of a single day in every day of the summer. However, there's an extra layer to these characters as well. One of my favorite running gags and story arcs involve Phineas's inability to notice that his neighbor Isabella is infatuated with him. All the characters have quirks like that. With a large ensemble, you tend to find boring characters, but I haven't found any in Phineas and Ferb. 
Plus, any joke opportunity the writers find they take advantage of. Whether it's nonsensical humor, physical comedy, deadpan expressions, sight gags, clever song lyrics, or wordplay, they use it, and most of the jokes do prove to be very funny. In terms of favorite characters, like most people, I enjoy the antics of Perry and Doofenshmirtz the most, but Candace is up there too. There's a heart to the character, but she's at her funniest when she becomes all crazy in her attempts to bust her brothers, and it's a huge credit to Tisdale's voice work as well as the hilarious writing. The other major appeal of these characters is in the character designs. The simple character shapes is actually a huge aspect of the characters, with Phineas looking like a P, Fur being shaped like an F, and Candace's head is a C. It's little touches like those that makes Phineas and Ferb such a fun and charming show that can be enjoyed by everyone of every age. Like other popular Disney Channel shows, Phineas and Ferb was given its own feature film titled Phineas and Ferb Across the Second Dimension, which delivers what one would expect. The callbacks to the series are plentiful, but it certainly doesn't sacrifice careful character development, in particular the relationship between Phineas and Perry. The songs have that same fun and catchy feel that those in the series do, especially the opening number, Everything is Better with Perry, and Summer, Where Do We Begin? And naturally, Dr. Doofenshmirtz is given the funniest line, or some hilarious counterplay with his other dimensional self. The animation is also given a major improvement, to the point where I don't understand why it didn't get a theatrical release, though Disney did opt to do so in the Netherlands and Belgium. However, if they released it on the big screen everywhere, I think it would have done very well, and I would definitely have gone to see it. I actually kind of miss when they made these big screen versions of popular animated series. Pretty much, if you like Phineas and Ferb, then you will likely enjoy Across the Second Dimension. In conclusion, Phineas and Ferb is an incredibly enjoyable show with the right ingredients. It's incredibly funny, has a great and likable set of characters, and is able to stay fresh through each episode. If you haven't seen it yet, it's worth a look. It's definitely one that Disney plans to keep running for years to come. So whether they're building a rocket, or fighting a mummy, or climbing up the Eiffel Tower, discovering something that doesn't exist, or giving a monkey a shower, who knows what Phineas and Ferb will think of next.